So I'm going to be completely upgrading this iMac with a 768GB SSD. This is an OEM Apple Blade SSD. I have an i7-3770, so I'm going to be putting this in to change with the i5. Changing the thermal compound, the CPU, and the GPU with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. And I'm going to be putting in this 8TB Seagate hard drive. And we're going to be making a 9TB Fusion drive. So I've already covered how to open the entire thing in the last video, and all I've done since that point is I've removed all of the adhesive around the edge, which is on like a plastic backing. So as soon as you get that lifted up, you just peel the whole thing up, and it's super simple to remove. So now the first thing we're gonna do is remove the speaker. So Torx 10, start taking these out. Now we can take a spudger, and we can remove the speaker cable right here. And now we can try and remove the power button cable try and get this out because there's a little channel right here where it goes into so we need to loosen that make sure not to touch the power supply now we should just be able to wiggle this free it's catching on the power cable a little bit there there we are all right we just take the rest of the speaker wire out very dusty oh my god and these screws for the ssd or a normal one would be a hard drive and the speaker Move this out of the way. And try and get this under here so we can remove the other speaker wire. Now we can just wiggle that out. Now we can remove this death power supply. This is the control cable. Make sure not to touch any of this. Here by the edges, pull it this way and then up. So you can see that little tab right there. And just reach in here, press the tab in, and unplug the power cable. Pull this down and disconnect this wire down here. Perfect. Now we can remove the fan cable. Now just peel up the masking on the duct here for the fan. You can take these screws out. Now this can just pull out. Oh my god. Now we can remove the cable for the camera. Let's just pry it up and out. Now we can remove all of the antenna cables, just making note that this one here. This one that goes to the back, this one goes to the top, this one is the one on the top, and this one is the one on the bottom, because I'm working on it upside down. Bottom one, top one, the one that goes to the top, and the one that goes to the middle. Take this screw out here. Now I can move this out of the way. And now I can remove the rest of these. There's also a really long one all the way in here that doesn't come out. So it's captive. So you just need a long screwdriver for that one. Now these ones here. Torx 25. Just gotta remove this stud here. Let's remove the audio jack. There we go. Some of the dust cleaned out. I'm gonna fix this hinge. See, there's no, there's no tension on it anymore. Cause right here, you can actually see little remnants of it. But there's a little plastic washer that goes in here, and this screw holds tension down onto it. So that plastic just breaks off, and then the spring comes loose, and then it no longer has tension. So they sell kits, which is just a piece of metal that goes right across both of these, and it just holds these down. And that's twenty-five dollars U.S plus shipping and import taxes to Canada. I'm gonna take the little plastic thing off and I'm just gonna get a metal washer and put that right on. Take all these out. Now you can take the stand off. Shove that in there. We literally have to fight a spring while trying to thread this in at the same time. Okay, there we go. Now we'll do the other side. These are tight so they don't back over anymore. Now the hinge is fixed. So now we can put the stand back on. Perfect. Has tension again. Fuck. Okay. Just gonna take these off. Okay. Let's start with these ones for the GPU. Just take that little bracket off. that out. 
This can come off. There we are. I'm just gonna try and take this all from here. There we are. The CPU comes off with the heatsink. So I wanted to take it off upside down so that way it doesn't fall back in a socket. So that's the old i5 and that's the new i7. Now we just get to clean this up. Okay, heat sinks are clean. Where the GPU? Where is the thing that I need with the stuff? So the CPU has to go in the notches right here and here. So they have to go vertical and then facing the power supply connector side. So we're going to try and get that in there. Just like that. I'm going to apply the thermal compound. I'm not going to change the thermal pads because they're still very squishy. So they're not dried out at all. Here's my dab on the GPU to make sure the entire thing is covered. So that's good coverage. That'll spread out fine. These are all cleaned off. The dust is all taken care of. So now this can go back on. I just have to make sure we slide this down in here like that. And that goes on there. I just flip this over. Now this has alignment pegs up a little bit. So now that is aligned. Let's take this bracket put it right here. Start threading it in. And start threading the other one in. Now just tighten them down. Cross pattern. This bracket goes back on. These have a spring in them. So we just have to hold down on each one. And we're putting the screws in. That's it. We now have an i7-3770. New thermal compound on the GPU and the CPU. You can put in the 32 gigs of RAM. So undo these. These just go into the slot and then click in place. And then the final 8 gigs. 32 gigabytes of RAM. So these right here, the little hook just has to go right on there. Just like that. Now it's time for this SSD, but first we need a screw. Okay, so I found this M2 by 5 millimeter from a laptop repair kit. Screw it down. There we are. Installed. Now we can start putting it all back together. Ugh. So we can take this, start feeding it down, making sure those parts go between there. Run that through. It's still loose. Good. So I grab an Ethernet cable. Just gonna plug this in. Just to make sure that it's all aligned. And then some kind of USB thing. Plug in. I'll make sure the ports are all lined up. Damn it. You get how it works. You have to put some devices in, tighten all the screws down, and then it's just reassembly. The exact same way that it came apart. This is the layout of all the glue. The adhesive strips that have to go around the edges. And I have it all taken off. You can see that you just line up with those little holes. And then we can just line it up, stick it on. First thing I have to do here is open terminal because I have to delete the APFS volume so that way we can make a fusion drive. So I'm gonna go to utilities terminal and now in here we're gonna type in disk util list. It's gonna show all of the drives that we have here. Now we have to delete that APFS container, so we're going to type in disk util APFS delete container, and now we want to label the disk. 
So for that one right there, that's going to be this one, the 751.1 gigabyte. That's the Blade SSD that we just put in. So that's a disk two. So I'm gonna type in disk two, and now it's deleting the APFS volume. And we can just type in disk to the list again. And now uh, you can see that it's just a regular guided partition table. Now we can make the Fusion Drive using the 8 terabyte hard drive and the 768 gigabyte Blade SSD. So for that, we want to make note of the disk number for the hard drive and the disk number for the SSD, which is now disk 1 because that container is gone. So disk 1 for the SSD, disk 0 for the hard drive. And we're going to type in disk util APFS create container with a capital C, and now the main is going to be the SSD, so that was disk 1, and the secondary is going to be disk 0. Uh, why is the disk busy? Oh, I might actually have to use the partitions for this. So let's create a partition for the SSD. So disk util, erase disk, capital D, JHFS plus, now we're going to name it, so it's just going to be SSD, and it's going to be dev disk one So now it's created that partition, so now, if we list them again, we have up here, these are the partitions for the hard drive and the SSD. So it's going to be disk one S2, and then disk zero S2. So let's try that first command again, and let's change this to S2, and this one to S2. So now it's using those partitions that we just made. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to take it just till again and then list so that way we can find the container. Here you can see that we have this synthesized one and it's plus 8.8 .8 terabytes and that is now labeled as disk 2. Now we want to create the fusion drive with disk util apfs add volume to capital V. Now we're going to enter the identifier number which was disk 2 and we want it to be APFS, all caps there, and we want to name it, so in quotations we're going to do Fusion Drive. Now it's created it, so disk util list. And now up here at the top you can see that we have this 8.8 .8 terabyte Fusion Drive. Close all that, go back to disk utility here, you can see that we have a Fusion Drive, and that's the only disk that we can install to. And it's 8.75 terabytes because that's the 8 terabyte hard drive and the 768 gigabyte SSD. Now we can install Mac OS. And we can install to the Fusion Drive. Now we just wait until it's all set up. So it's all done now. We're on Mac OS 10.14.6, which is the version in the last video that I illustrated. That's the one that I want to be running on. We have a 3.4 gigahertz Intel Core i7, so it works perfectly because it is the highest processor that Apple will support when you buy one of these. Uh, we have 32 gigs of RAM, 1600 megahertz, which is the max that's available. We still have the same GPU. And then down here, we have the 8.75 terabyte Fusion Drive running in APFS. So now everything works perfect. So I'm just going to run these benchmarks again, and then we'll compare these results with the previous ones that we got from the last video uh, running 10.14.6. And then we'll see the improvements from there. So now I'm going to be running Geekbench just like I did in the first benchmark. And you can see we got 8.24 and then 28.22. So let's run it a second time. And you can see 8.19 and then 28.07. And now the third and final time we're running this benchmark. And we got 827 and then 2804. Now we're on to the stress test. So I'm running the yes command in terminal. That's gonna run all of the cores at 100% usage and then Unigen Valley for the GPU stress test. So there we go, all of the results are done. Now it kind of goes without question that every single result on this one is going to be better, but the bigger differences were that it didn't thermal throttle at all and we got better scores. So I'll get into that in just a little bit, but right now the previous single core score that we got on the 10.14.6 tests from before was 717 as well as the multi-core score being 1651. So now when you compare that to the single core score that we got this time around of 823, as well as the multi-core score being 2811, it goes without question that this was an absolute slaughter. Like it completely killed it, which is something to expect because it's going from an i7 to an i5. But the difference is that it didn't thermal throttle because the i5 hit 105 degrees at its peak temperature and the i7 only hit 101, which is still really high, but 
it's not that bad considering it was able to sustain a full 3.7 gigahertz all the way through the entire test. So now before we get into the temperature differences and everything, the difference between the single core scores between the i5 and the i7, and with the new thermal compound on it, obviously because it didn't thermal throttle, the i7 ended up being 14.78% better than the i5. And this is where it really jumps up because the i7 ended up being 70.26% better than the i5. So if you're doing multi-core workloads, then you're looking at roughly a 70% increase in performance. So the temperature difference between the i5 and the i7 was 105 degrees on the i5 and then 101 degrees on the i7, so it ended up being a 3.96% decrease in temperature. So it's not much, but I mean, it's still improvement. And that was mostly due to the thermal compound on the i5 being the original thermal compound from 2012, which is why it kind of sucks that these iMacs are glued together, because this should be a serviceable piece that you can open and service and change the thermal compound and make sure it's actually good. But because you can't, they don't get serviced. And that just goes to show that many years down the road, the computer is still good, still working completely fine, but it's thermal throttling and losing performance because it's so hard to open. But proof of concept is that you can open it at home and you can fix all of this yourself and you can change your thermal compound and you can gain all of your performance back, which I've just proven by installing a hotter, faster i7 that's still running colder than the i5 that was in there with the stock thermal compound because it's not serviceable. Like most people aren't going to be able to just open that up with the things they have around the house. Proof of concept it is there. You can just change your thermal compound and you'll gain performance back because it does deteriorate over time, which we've shown. Now the GPU temperature did have a significant reduction from 89 degrees Celsius on that first test all the way to 73 degrees Celsius on the second test. But because max, you can't really do tons of monitoring with the GPUs. That's basically all I can get is it runs a little bit colder. I was thinking about it after how I probably should have installed Windows and then I could have run some gaming benchmarks or something, but it's too late for that. So it runs colder. I don't know if the GPU is thermal throttling or anything. So now lastly is the core clock between the i5 and the i7. So the i5 no, it was thermal throttling, so it only hit a peak core clock of 2.9 gigahertz, whereas the i7, it didn't thermal throttle. It stayed at 3.7 gigahertz through the entire stress test, which ends up being 27.58% better. So it's a little bit better than a 27% increase in performance, just because it wasn't thermal throttling, because it has proper thermal compound on it, and you can actually service it once you take it apart and then have to glue the whole thing back together. I hate this stupid computer. But the whole project is done now. Across the board, every single result that I ended up getting was a better, well, result. Everything ended up running better, colder, faster. It's just a good upgrade. And for the price of these CPUs, because they're so old, because they're just a third gen i7, they're worth picking up on eBay. So if you found something useful here, then like the video or don't like the video. There's a members program if you want to help support the channel, so you can pick any of the tiers, they're all donation prices, and basically you just get access to the VIP section of the Discord for the channel, as well as the ability to watch any of the videos as soon as they're uploaded instead of waiting for the upload dates. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, or don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.